Okay, so now we're just going to take a look at the final result and uh, obviously I've sanded this down and spent quite a bit of time basically getting things finished. And it's worth mentioning that um, I actually reapplied some of the uh, the U-Pole, the car body filler, a couple of times. For example, this area in particular I felt needed to sort of bulge out a little bit more uh, and so I just, you know, reapplied a second amount. And the nice thing is, is that even if you leave it very rough and unsanded, it just sticks to itself very, very easily. So again, it's no problem at all building up a couple of layers. And of course, it's even quite possible that you might have a thin area and sand back. And occasionally that means that maybe the geometry isn't quite right. Um, and for example, I put a little bit more on this top part so that I could, you know, bring a smooth curve down here and uh, just little details like that. If you ever do find yourself going through uh, a little bit, you can put a very small, and I stress very small amount of uh, super glue, and then uh, quickly activate it uh, using one of these spray activators, and then you can sand it back, and it saves you having to build up a whole new layer of uh, body filler. But again, just for little sparing bits like that. If it really has gone very thin, then you have a structural issue, and you need to deal with that and build it up. Uh, so again, I've also used a, I've also removed all the um, the uh, blue tack and uh, used a vacuum cleaner to clean out the insides, and of course made sure that I can access the base where the batteries are, like so. Um, I've still got this covered up just because I still don't want any residual dust getting in the lens, as it's the particularly the sensitive part of this this whole project. So again, I thought I'd um, just discuss a little bit that we started off talking about all, you know, the, the, how the sketch was going to represent roughly what we wanted. But what's interesting is how that it's come down to the uh, final detail, which is more true to what feels a good fit in your hand. And I like the result that this has actually stepped away from the sketch and become something of its own. In other words, something that I feel ergonomically fits me. So again, you're welcome to sort of, if you're doing this with uh, other people in your class or something, it's worth comparing and contrasting and seeing how people get different results and what things are common, what things are different. So what I'm going to uh, basically leave that as it is now. And uh, what I've got here is just a little bit of an example of working with blue foam and finishing it. And this is the rough cut and also cut with a scalpel. And then if you were to take the polyfiller, as I said, or the spackle, then you can see how it, it varies um, in quality as you sand it down. Similarly with the chemical filler. Um, and also I've also used uh, white putty in the past, which is this stuff. Uh, I find it a little bit too solventy, a little bit too aggressive personally. Um, so I tend to use either of these two. And again, this has got a layer of the, the chemical filler underneath it. So... Then you can go on to sand it through 150 grit to 500 to say 1200 and you'll end up with a very very fine surface. Um, again you may need to put a little bit of uh, just plain emulsion paint uh, matte finish and then sand that back with the same 1200 grit. So then you can proceed with the spray painting and uh, again the classic advice of spraying little and building up layers is far better than trying to cover the whole thing in one. Obviously with details, details like this you'll need to cover up with masking tape, um, but the reason I'm not actually going to be doing that today is uh, I feel that there's something a little bit interesting about the sort of tactile nature of this, and so I'm going to have a bit of an experiment and uh, I'm going to cover the whole thing in a very fine layer of Sugru. Um, which is a, a an air curable uh, rubber and basically uh, I think that'll give it a nice grippy feel because usually a, a conventional mouse is sort of one that will just lie on the table and you're essentially pushing it around whereas with this I think there's a there's a temptation for it to sort of slip out of the fingers so I think it'll be quite nice if it's something a little bit grippy to hold on to so also I haven't seen it done before so it'll be a new one for me as well so um I'll show you the beginning of the process in the next step and see how we get on. 